Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today, we have an instrument that nobody has ever seen in the flesh before. I've talked about always wanting a single neck pickup Gibson guitar on like a non-jazz box style things. And the Music Zoo created these really weird Les Paul Juniors. We briefly talked about them last week when we reviewed their 1958 Les Paul reissue that had just a single bridge humbucker. But after recording that episode, I was like, ah oh, man, I've got to get the Junior to review the complete set because, I mean, even if Music Zoo does make more of these. It's gonna take about a year for him to come in. And on top of that, I've been wanting to see one of these new custom shop alligator cases for the longest time, and oh man, these are beautiful. So feel free to skip to the unboxing part, just look at the channel guide, but look at this case. So original Les Paul Juniors and other kind of student level modeled guitars would come in like a faux alligator chipboard case. They were garbage. But these new Lifton style cases replicate the old school look of those. And I'm just in love with these cases. It feels exactly the way I wanted it to. I mean, it feels way better than those vintage ones. But the handle's color even matches the case. It doesn't have the same texture, but they've got the Gibson badge right there. I believe those ones actually had it on the inside lid, but I can see why they wouldn't replicate that. So it's basically just like the uh, other Lifton style ones, except for it's meant for flat tops and not necessarily the carved top instruments. This is very cool. I'd like to just see a Les Paul standard one just like this, even though not technically era correct. But anyways, let's go ahead and open the Les Paul Jr. Rhythm model. Oh man, that is... That is all kinds of weird. <laughs> I like it, but at the same time I can understand why somebody might not. So, here we go. Les Paul Jr. that has just a single neck pickup. Juniors are known for being one pickup instruments, but generally this P90 is in the bridge position, and that's why the rock stars love them. They've got the bite, the growl, the grit. They were relatively inexpensive. But then famous people started to use them, and then the prices of vintage ones started to go up. But it's a great way to get into a true 50s Les Paul. It's just initially meant to be a student model. But they're great guitars. I've had some vintage ones. I haven't had one that has the original finish. Usually they're like stripped finishes or something to make them affordable to me. But I think this is actually the first historic style junior I've ever had anyways. So besides the fact that we've got the P90 in the wrong position, it'll be a fun eye-opening experience here. So my biggest critique for this model is the fact that they went for the dog ear P90. I think it would have been great if they would have did the soap bar or did an Alnico 5 staple pickup. That would have been so sweet. I would have bought it so much faster. And my reasoning behind that is the reason why I love one pickup Gibsons is the fact that you have all this room to pick and a soap bar would have had a slightly smaller profile to it or the Alnico 5. I mean, I suppose they could have put an Alnico 5 in a dog ear P90 style as well, but I just feel that kind of cluttered up the look a little bit. But this is a limited run for Music Zoo. We kind of talked about them last week. They are the guys that custom order some weird stuff and it's always cool to see what they have in their shop. So you can check them out on their website, themusiczoo.com. And I'm sure if you want to custom order one of these, they'll gladly help you. But as far as stock and available, yeah, they only made two of these and they're all sold out now. But besides the obvious specs here that are different, we've got this really nice chunky neck profile. You've got the regular Les Paul Jr. style logos. It's really not all that special outside of the fact that it's a weirdo, right? But I'm noticing this one has the same, the, like, really heavy scuff marks as that last one. I'm not sure if Gibson's doing that, because that can't be the case. But let's finish looking at this case. This is what I also love. You've got that nice brown interior. You've got a Gibson pull tab here, just like some of the Gibson USAs would have. And inside here, we've got some case candy. It looks like these cases are Costa Rican made. Surprisingly, not all that heavy, though. And we've got the silica packet. Looks like case keys. Regular vintage-style case candy stuff here. Pre-packed checklist, which they name it 57 Les Paul Jr. SC. I'm not quite sure what that would stand for. Single coil. And then we've got our regular COA here that says just 57 Les Paul Jr. I mean, what's my guess? I think this is more of a novelty rather than something I would probably custom order for myself. But it's definitely worth documenting for its obscurity and strangeness. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and throw this thing on the workbench and then take an individual look at its parts and specs.
Inside the Music Zoo exclusive Les Paul Jr. I thought the VOS finish looked kind of like garbage on the top of this one because there's a bunch of weird scratches and they didn't quite get it all nice and buffed in evenly. So I decided, I always tell you guys, you can buff that off if you want to just with a little bit of a polishing job. That's exactly what I did to the top of this one. I mean, it still has a nice age worn in like vibe to it, but no more of those weird marks that you were seeing around there. As far as the edges go, after I polished it up, it disappeared where you can't always see it at every angle, but it's definitely still there. I'm curious if that has something to do with Music Zoo's photography, or maybe they play the guitars one of their practices because is at first I thought okay it's just rubbing up against the case but on both guitars that seems like a strange anomaly but let's go ahead and dive into our neck pickup see this is what I was saying I wish they would have left it as just a soap bar do you see how much smaller of a profile that would have it wouldn't have these ears so you just have more room to strum now you could convert this into a soap bar style it wouldn't be that hard you would just be left with those two screw holes on each side here's what the back side of this historic p90 looks like no markings or anything like that and the cavity route just looks like what you would normally see in one of these except for i think it normally left the cavity right here but this time they have to drill a hole through there then that routes all the way down into here and within the circuit that pickup reads 6.93 k ohms but here's what that p90 cover looks like now cleaning this thing, it was really bizarre to clean around the wrap tail studs right here and then not have anything right there. You definitely don't see many burst guitars with the, the pickup just hiding up here in the darkness. But continuing on from there, you just have a master volume, master tone. You're going to have to work that somehow. I'm really curious how this thing is going to be. I've never had just a neck pickup guitar before. Like, I've had plenty of just bridge pickups, and that, that's good enough. You can tame those down, but it's hard to get neck pickups more bitey. But just in case you're curious what this finished VOS stuff looks like when you polish it off, it's just like a brown color. I didn't wipe the VOS treatment off of any of the hardware or anything, though. But that's what our historic wrap tail looks like. And they've got some light aging to our studs there. All the screws on this thing are all rusty as part of the VOS treatment. Maybe a little less so on the ones for the pickups though. The Les Paul Juniors are just slab mahogany bodies. Full on Les Pauls are about two inches thick, whereas these are just a little over one and a half. But moving on from the mahogany body, thick mahogany neck, rosewood fretboard. Now the originals would have had Brazilian rosewood with the acrylic dot inlays, but this is just regular rosewood. Looks like we've got about 22 medium jumbo frets on here. Regular 24 3 quarter inch scale length, they didn't mess with that, or radius is still 12. But we've got a nylon nut that measures 1.7 inches, and that increases to 2.07 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, wow, 0.95. And then by the 12th, probably what, 1.2? Yeah, 1.01. Here's a good look at how chunky that neck is. First fret and the 12th fret. Definitely just a nice rounded C shape. Something else important to note are our side marker inlays are actually kind of a yellow hue. So that means they have a tinted lacquer over top of pretty much all of this. So it's not a clear coat necessarily. It's got a little bit of a tint to it to give it that vintage aesthetic. I mean, especially compare that to the white pearloid dots right here versus those. Moving on to the face of the headstock. You might say, why would you ever buy a custom shop guitar and want silkscreen decals? I mean, they're trying to recreate a vintage original. And these things used to not make much sense to me. Like you'd have to pay four to $6,000 for a brand new one. Why don't you just buy a vintage? The vintage ones have been going way up in price. It's like eight to 10 grand to buy an original finish one now, depending on condition. But another part of their stripped down features are they have just a single ply truss rod cover that's pretty flimsy because that's what the originals have. However, this is one of those guitars where the custom shop sets the truss rod, in my opinion, incorrectly. It's like they don't trim this off to where it should be. I mean, I sent a brand new guitar back to them at one point in time, that slash double neck. They fixed the crack in the control cavity, but they didn't seem to think that was something wrong. If you look in the light just right, you can actually see the maple that caps off the truss rod channel. If you want to see that uncovered, check out my The Paul Anniversary review. Moving on to the back side, I left the VOS alone here so you can kind of see some of those scratches that I was talking about. You can see through to the mahogany body, it's just a dark back. I mean, in most lighting situations, it just appears almost a blackish brown color. 
But I did see like a few small impressions or scratches down here. Now some of that could just be within the VOS finish and if I were to polish it up like I did the top, some of that will go away. But I'm pretty sure that one's there to stay. That's a bit disappointing on a brand new instrument. But there we can see our pots, Gibson branded, and you've got your Bumblebee capacitor in there as a vintage one would have. They only need a tiny little route because, you know, master volume, master tone. That's how those things normally are. With your output jack on the side, strap button right here, and then one up here. Something about the historic juniors that are different from most, like, regular USA production ones are the shelf. And what we're talking about is this little extra bump right here. Now, the original collection ones, they have something similar, but it's definitely nowhere near as pronounced as the true Custom Shop 50 spec one. So that's something you pay a premium for, is how these things are constructed. Now, obviously, this one's not very traditional so I mean you really could have did whatever you want like if I would have custom ordered this besides playing with the pickup probably would have went for the Gibson Mother of Pearl logo probably gave it one of those really cool historic style truss rod covers and had him do like an access heel carve just to be funny <laughs> <laughs> but anyways the back of the neck pretty much the same as what we were just seeing a nice reddish hue I did kind of wipe the neck down a bit but so, so you can see the difference between you know more glossy versus the VOS starting right there you also have the vintage style tuners on here, so it's three in a line Klusen strip style tuners instead of being singular. And our serial number is 711267. I remember seeing 711, I was like, oh yeah, that's a cool serial number. But that dates it to 2021. Our last spec to capture is the weight. 7 pounds, 11.7 .7 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this one sounds. All right, let's go ahead and discover these tones together. I've got to say, I love the way this looks on a strap. It's not what you normally expect from a junior. That pickup just kind of almost completely disappears. Except for we don't have to deal with just piezo sounds like sometimes pickupless electric guitars will have. <laughs> dark sounding as I thought it was going to be. You can also kind of brighten it up if you pick closer to the bridge. I wish I could say it feels more liberating to play down by the bridge because you don't have to pick up, but for me, it's just always harder to strum there because you've got all the tension of the wraparound bridge. It's not quite as comfortable for me. So really, it just feels like a normal guitar for me because I'm always picking up by the neck pickup. up in kind of an interesting way though almost stratty like not as far as the tones but like the clarity of it it's very clear sounding i mean here it is again i'm about eight You can also play with the tones.
Certainly inspires you to play a little bit differently. It doesn't quite have that bite that the bridge has, but it's not as absent of it than I was thinking it was going to be. Let's see what we can do with some distortion, which you wouldn't normally think on a guitar like this. as the name implies. <laughs> Now that we know all about the Les Paul Jr. rhythm, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Uh, the, I like it, but I, I don't like it at the same time. Like, I enjoy the inventiveness of this, but if I had to choose a custom shop guitar for this type of money, this would not be it. But this is a great, like, addition to a collection. Just hang up on the wall, freak out your gear buddies with it, because it's, like, just so quirky. It does inspire you to play a little bit differently than you normally do, because if you want a little bit more bite out of it, you just gotta get aggressive and start hammering on around the bridge. But at the same time, if you need to do some songwriting strictly with the neck pickup and you don't wanna get, you know, all distracted by a bridge pickup or anything else, this would be a nice little songwriting tool. It was not uncomfortable to play. It really didn't feel all that different from a regular Les Paul styled instrument because that's just where I normally pick anyways is right here for the most part. So. I'm glad I documented it because uh, I doubt you'll see very many more of these things in existence. I'm sure you can contact Music Zoo if you're interested in custom ordering your own one brand new. I'll have this one on my website if you want to buy it from me. But other than that, as far as I'm aware, there's only two of these things in existence at this point in time. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking this guitar out with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglysguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description.